But I, I want to talk about the honour of motherhood. Because in Western society, what we have done, we have denigrated the honourable and venerable vocation that is motherhood. We talk about motherhood as if somehow a woman who is a mother isn't fulfilling her full potential or has somehow failed in her life because she's decided to be a mother. And we've got to the point in the madness of the West that we've even denigrated the idea that there's such a thing as a woman. We, 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 we can't even, the elites of our society can't even talk as if a woman exists. They, they, you know, we've all seen Keir Starmer not sure whether women have cervixes. And we've started to hear language like bodies that are pregnant. Seriously, that, that's a thing now. And, and we've denigrated motherhood. But I, I want to point out to you that, because we're still celebrating Christmas, that the story of Christmas venerates motherhood. And it venerates women because God entered into creation through a woman whom he made his mother we read in Luke chapter 1 verse 39 on now at that time Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and cried out with a loud voice, Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? Now let's just think about this. Elizabeth says, the mother of my Lord. Elizabeth is a Jew. Who is her Lord? Yahweh. So when she says the mother of my Lord, who is she talking about? She's talking about Mary the Theotokos. This is why at the Council of Ephesus, the church gave Mary the honorific title Theotokos, God bearer. The one through whom God enters the world. And this means that motherhood is a vocation. Mary was called by the angel Gabriel to be the mother of Yeshua, the salvation, Yahweh's salvation, the divine Logos made flesh. And Mary said, be it unto me as you have spoken. I am the Lord's handmaid. So motherhood is a vocation. And that means that any woman that chooses to be a mother is someone who is reaching their full potential. A mother is someone that represents life's first teacher, society's first teacher, society's first line of healthcare, society's first line of police, society's first line of social care. Mothers are at the bedrock of every family and every family is the bedrock of society. When we devalue motherhood, we cut away at one of the fundamental roots that feeds a healthy society. And yet in our Western world, because the Western civilization worships the god of Mammon, the god of money, we denigrate motherhood because we need women to be servants of the economy. We need people to be atomized to serve the economy. And so we've put all kinds of pressures for ideological and economic reasons on women that they should somehow balance being a mother with being a worker. And we're seeing the fruits of that disaster play out in our culture in all kinds of ways. What we need as a society is to truly value and honor our mothers. And I encourage you as Christians to honor the feet of your mothers. 
to honor the hands of your mothers, to honor the lips of your mothers, to honor their foreheads, their hair. That as a society, we should be supporting mothers in motherhood. We should be supporting them to be good mothers of the family. Because a mother, to run a household well, takes a lot of skill. You've got to create a syllabus of education for your children. You've got to manage a budget. You've got to make sure that the home is clean, tidy and organised so that all members of your family can find what they need when they need it. To be a mother takes a lot of skill and organisation and to be a good mother takes a lot because to be a good mother you don't get breaks, you don't get holidays, you're on duty 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year, every year until your child can look after themselves. There's no break from being a mother. And one of the ways that we should honour our mothers is to pass in law a law that would mean that a child not looking after their mother is as guilty of elderly abuse as a mother who does not look after her child. It should be a form of neglect not to look after your mothers and fathers. Punishable in law in the same way that we punish adults for not looking after their children. We need to honour our parents and we need to honour our mothers and need to honour our mothers within the community because without the family society breaks apart. So that's the first story, the first moral teaching that I want to talk about from the Christmas story. Talk number two. Now I want to talk about the honour and the dignity of adoption. 